Hello friends, welcome to Study Algorithms and today we would be looking at dynamic programming algorithmic paradigms. First, I would explain you a variation of the 0-1 knapsack problem and why do we call it 0-1. Then, we would try to solve the problem using dynamic programming. I would be demoing you the complete solution and highlighting each step that we take so that the solution becomes very easy to follow. Let's get started. This video is a part two of the dynamic programming algorithmic paradigms. If you haven't watched part one, check the link in the description below to know more about dynamic programming. If you are here just by searching the knapsack problem, let's go. This problem is a variation of the zero one knapsack problem, but going into such technical terms or very specific problem names at an early stage can lead to some confusions in your mind. So I tried to simplify the problem a little bit that would feel a little more relatable to you. Since these days, everybody's watching out the calories that they eat, I thought this example would be a little interesting. So here is you rocking along and you have a couple of food items to choose from. Now, let me just describe you the problem statement first. When you're eating food, every food item has some calories and certain amount of fullness that you feel after eating it. For example, you may feel really full after eating a bowl of rice and you may not feel full at all just after having a chocolate bar. So you are a calorie conscious kind of a person whose maximum intake for the day is just 500 calories. But what do you want to do is you want to feel full. You don't want to feel hungry because a hungry person is an angry person, right? Moving on, you have a couple of food items to choose from. Now these are these food items, a fish, an apple, a cookie, a bowl of soup and some broccoli. Now all of these food items have certain values associated with them. Like a fish would give you 150 calories and its fullness strength is 300. An apple would just be 50 calories and its fullness strength is 100. A cookie would give you 100 calories and its fullness strength is 200 and so on. You get the idea. The catch here is that when you are consuming a food item, either you can have it completely or you can decide not to have it. What I mean by that is you cannot take a bite of apple and leave it or have half of a fish and leave it. And that is why it is called 0-1. Like either you can have it or you cannot have it at all. Given all these conditions that your maximum calorie intake is 500 and with these food items and their calories and fullness values, I need to feel the maximum fullness. The problem statement is that given all of these conditions and all of these food items, I want to feel maximum full such that I do not exceed my calorie count. If this problem statement is clear to you, let's move ahead. But if you're still feeling some doubt in the problem statement, I would suggest you to rewind the video a little bit and again understand the problem statement correctly because that is very essential to understanding this problem. If you remember from our previous examples, we need some kind of a memory structure to store the data. In the previous case, it was an array. Since this problem is a little advanced, we would be using some kind of a matrix or you can say a table. So in the first row of the table, I have a calorie intake limit. That means what if I can have a maximum of 50 calories? What if I can have a maximum of 100 calories? I limited this to 500 because in a problem statement, the maximum calories that we could have was 500. And in all of these cells, we will try to write down how much fullness can we achieve. What we do here is that we take up all the food items one by one. And then let us just try to fill up this table. For instance, say that you only have an apple right now. You don't have any other food item and you can have zero calories per day. So zero calories means zero fullness and hence you cannot achieve anything. But let's say you just have an apple and you have a calorie intake limit of 50. So you consume an apple 50 minus 50, you are left with zero calories and you attain a fullness of 100. So I write down this value 100 in this cell. And that means I'm remembering that if I can eat 50 calories in a day, that is the maximum amount of happiness that I can get. Now, the apple is finished. No matter how many calories I have remaining for the day, I had only one item and that was an apple. Since I cannot have any other item, I would be just having the fullness value of 100, no matter 
how much calories I can have in the entire day. Moving on, now we have two items, an apple and a cookie. We have already computed what would be the fullness value for a calorie intake limit of zero. What is the fullness value if we can have only 50 calories? That would be 100. So I would just copy down this value 100. Moving on, now my calorie intake limit is 100. And in 100, I, I can either eat an apple or I can eat a cookie. Since we have already calculated everything about the apple, let us try to eat a cookie. I have 100 calories. I eat the cookie and I don't have any calories left. I get the fullness value of 200. Now this fullness value is more than the fullness value I achieved by eating just an apple. 200 is greater than 100. And hence, I copy this value in my table. Moving on, now I have 150 calories. I eat the cookie and I have 50 calories remaining. But due to the cookie, I got a fullness value of 200. Now I have 50 calories remaining. If you look up the table, I have 50 calories remaining, so the maximum fullness value I could get was 100. I eat up those 50 calories and I get a fullness value of 100 and my new fullness value is 300. This fullness value is greater than 100 that I had by just eating an apple. And hence, I update this value to 300. Since I have eaten both the cookie and the apple now, I can just go on to update all the values to 300. Let us move ahead with three items now, an apple, a cookie and a fish. With only 50 calories, I can just have an apple, so I just copy this value. With 100 calories, I still cannot eat the fish, so I know the value and that was 200. But with the fish now, I can consume the fish for 150 calories. So if I would try to consume the fish, and my calorie intake limit is 150, I eat the fish, I have zero calories remaining and the fullness value I get is 300. This is literally the same as the previous fullness value, so we can just copy it in the cell and don't worry about it. Moving on, now my calorie intake limit is 200. I eat up the fish for 150 calories I'm left with 50 calories and I got a fullness value of 300. For 50 calories, I can get a fullness value of 100. So I add 100 in this, I get 400 as my new fullness value. Now this fullness value is more than the previous one. So I would be using this value in my memory. Similarly, we go ahead with 250 calories. We eat the fish for 150 calories. We are remaining with 100 calories and we already got a fullness value of 300. With 100 calories and two items, you can see that we can get a fullness value of 200. So I add up these two values and my new fullness value is 500. This is more than the previous row, so I update this value to 500. Going ahead, I have 300 calories. I eat up the fish. I have 150 calories remaining and I have a fullness value of 300. With 150 calories on my mind and two items, I can get a fullness value of 300. So I add these two up, I get a new value as 600. I update it in my table and move ahead. Now I have 350 calories. I eat up the fish. I am remaining with 200 calories and I already get a fullness value of 300. With 200 calories, as you can see, we are again getting a fullness value of 300. So I take this, my new fullness value 600, and I update it all the way up to the end. Because no matter how many more calories I'm consuming, you can see that the maximum fullness we could get was 300. Moving on to four items now. With 50 calories, I can just have an apple, so that would be 100. With 100 calories, it would be 200. With 150 calories, I can have the fish, so it would be 300. I still cannot eat the broccoli. Now, now I am at 200 calories. So, okay, let us try to eat the broccoli. I eat the broccoli and I get 
the calories left as zero, but I only got a fullness value of 350. Now this value is less than 400. So I wouldn't include it in my diet because this is not giving me a higher fullness value. So I simply copy the result from above. Moving on, if I get 250 calories, I eat the broccoli, I have 50 calories remaining and I got the fullness value of 350. With 50 calories, I can get a maximum happiness value of 100. That means the fullness value would be 450. This is again less than 500. So I wouldn't update it and keep it 500. Moving on, when my calories is 300, I eat the broccoli. I am left with 100 calories and I got a fullness value of 350. With 100 calories remaining, the maximum value I could get was 200. So I add them up, I get 550. This is still less than 600 and hence I wouldn't be updating it. Moving on, I can eat 350 calories. I eat the broccoli. I am left with 150 calories and I got a fullness value of 350. With 150 calories, I can get a fullness value of 300 using the above three items. So I add them up. My value comes out to be 650. Now this is greater than 600. And hence, I would be updating it into the table. Move ahead. I have 400 calories. I eat the broccoli. I am left with 200 calories. And I got the fullness value of 350. With 200 calories, I look up in my table and the maximum fullness I can get is 400. So I add them up. My new fullness value is 750. And this is greater than 600. So I would be copying it. Moving ahead again, I can eat 450 calories. I eat the broccoli. I'm left with 250 calories. And I got a fullness value of 350. With 250 calories, I can get a fullness level of 500. So I eat it. My new fullness level is 850, which is greater than 600. So I copy it. Moving ahead for the one last time, I can eat 500 calories. I eat the broccoli. I'm left with 300 calories and I got the fullness level of 350. For 300 calories, I can get a fullness level of 600. I add them up. My fullness level is 950. This is greater than 600. And hence, I copy this value 950. Going with the soup, since it has the max number of calories, but we know our results. For 50 calories, we could only get a maximum value of 100. For 100 calories intake, we could get 200. For 150 calories, we could get 300. Then for 200, we could get 400. Now comes 250. So I take 250. I eat up my soup. I get zero calories remaining and a fullness level of 400. Now this is less than 500. So I wouldn't be updating it. Moving on, I have 300 calories. I eat up the soup. I have 50 calories remaining and my fullness level is 400. With 50 calories, I can get only 100 maximum fullness. So plus 100 gives me 600. And that is typically the same. So we leave it over here. Move ahead again. For 350 calories, I eat up the soup. I'm left with 100 calories and I got a fullness level of 400. For 100 calories, I can attain a maximum fullness of 200. I add them up and the fullness I get is 600. Now this is less than 650. So we don't need to copy it. Moving ahead, 400 minus 250 for the soup. Left with 150 calories and a fullness level of 400. With 150 calories, you can attain a fullness level of 300. Try to add them up and you get a fullness level of 700, which is less than 750. And hence, you keep 750 in here. Similarly, the last two values I'm leaving for you as an exercise, but these would be the values that come out. Finally, 
our table is complete. That means we now know every result that is possible. Just try to think what would have happened if we had gone by the brute force approach. We would be just be trying all different permutations. To know more about the brute force algorithm paradigm, you can refer to the link in the description below. But if you look at this table, you know that for a 500 calorie limit and given five items, what is the maximum amount of fullness that you can get? And the answer in this case turns out to be 950. But do you see the beauty of dynamic programming? Let us say this question reduced to what is the maximum happiness that you could get if your calorie intake limit is only 350? In that case, 650 is your answer. If your maximum calorie limit is 200, then your answer is 400. If you remove soup from the entire equation, then for a 500 limit, your answer is 950. For a 200 limit, your answer is 400. And for a 100 limit, your answer is 200. That means you have memorized everything. And this is the beauty of dynamic programming. I hope with this example, you were able to get an idea about how dynamic programming works and which direction do you need to think into. I agree that dynamic programming and coming up with this kind of a solution can be a little tricky, but just remember that you need to form some kind of a data structure where you can remember the results. I hope this turns out to be helpful. What we were doing throughout is breaking the problem into optimal sub-problems and moving towards a global optimum solution. I hope you feel much more confident in dynamic programming now. Check out my text-based explanation, link in the description, to know more about optimal substructure and optimal sub-problems. Also let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.